Garrison from Android Authority. Now, a feature you find in the camera of many high-end smartphones is optical image stabilization. But the question is, what is it and how does it work? Well, let me explain. Normally, when you take a photograph, you maybe sort of line up the shot with your, your subject and you maybe you'll play with the, some of the controls, you'll do the focusing, and then at some point, you'll hit the button to take the photo. Now, when you do that, what happens is a shutter opens, particularly on a traditional camera, and light will come in and it will hit the sensor. In the old days, it would hit a film and the exposure would occur during that moment. Now, if you move the camera, even because your hands are slightly shaking because you can't keep your hands rock solid still all of the time, even if you move the camera a little bit, you get blurriness. Now, blurriness, of course, is the enemy of a good photo. And therefore, there is a system called optical image stabilization. And what that does is this, is whenever you move in one direction, a little mechanism works inside to bring the lens in the other direction and therefore compensate for the movement. This normally happens on two axes. In fact, what happens is there are a couple of gyroscopes that actually measure the velocity and the angle of which way the phone is moving. And as you take the picture, the little microcontroller that moves a floating lens with some motors attached to it in the other, other direction to compensate for that movement. Now, obviously, it can't compensate for huge movements because you've only got a little lens and a little bit of movement. However, it can compensate for camera shake. Now, it's also worth mentioning at this point that OIS can't stop the blurriness in a moving target. If you're trying to photograph a pet or a child or a moving car that's going past you at speed, if you're not panning correctly with it, then OIS cannot compensate for the blurriness that will come from a moving object. It can only compensate for what's happening in your hand while you're taking the photo. Now, of course, in good light situations with a traditional camera and with a smartphone camera, what happens is that shutter speed that shutter speed is very quick. The time it takes to open and close that shutter, to take the picture, to make the exposure is very quick. And therefore, the amount of time which you can move is also very small. However, in lower light situations, maybe you're out uh, of an evening and you're trying to take some photographs, then because it's lower light, you actually find the exposure time is longer. And the longer it is, therefore, your hand can move. Now, another type of image stabilization is called digital image stabilization, and it's often used when you're recording video, and sometimes it's called video digital image stabilization. And you'll find that on certain smartphones, for example, on the Galaxy Note 5. Now, when you start videoing, what happens is the little computer on board shifts the picture around digitally inside of its memory to compensate for the movements that are happening with the hand. And as a result, you get a much more steady picture. So I'd like to show you the difference between a phone that has image stabilization and a phone that doesn't. Now this isn't meant to be a head to head between two particular devices, but rather just a demonstration of the quality of pictures taken with one and with the other. Now to do this test, I've got two phones with me. One is the Nexus 6P and the other is the Note 5. Now the Note 5 has optical image stabilization and the Nexus 6P does not. Now trying to find a way that was consistent in terms of the movement of the phone was actually quite difficult. And after a lot of experimentation, I found that the way that gives the most consistent results is for me to jump up in the air, take a photo while I'm in the air, but of course moving, and then uh, land again, then do it again and do it several times. And I took a whole series of photos to make sure it wasn't maybe a fluke or just the, you know, the very arc of my jumping or something like that to try and get the best uh, comparison between these two devices. So first of all, here are some photos I took with the Nexus 6P, which does not have image stabilization. And now here are the photos that I took with a Note 5, which does have image stabilization. Now, first of all, I want to say that both phones actually have very good cameras. However, in this situation where I'm actually jumping in the air and then taking the photo, I'm actually moving while I'm taking the photo, we can clearly see a difference. Some of the Nexus 6P photos are actually quite good and actually are pretty reasonably sharp. However, the majority of them are blurred. On the other hand, the Note 5 pictures, one or two of them are blurred, but the majority of them are quite clear. And here we can see the difference between the image stabilization at work and a phone without the image stabilization. 
Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please use the comments below to tell me what you think about optical image stabilizations, any successes or failures you've had with it. Is it something you look for when you buy your next smartphone? Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. You can also follow me on social media. And also, if you use this link here, you can talk to me in the Android Authority forums. There's a place there where you can ask me questions about optical image stabilization or about any of the topics that I cover, and I will check that regularly and get back to you to see if I can help. And also, don't forget to stay tuned to AndroidAuthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.